fast-paced world with so much happening around us, we sometimes fail to see what is and has been around us all the time right there in front of us. Today, I would like to designate on a topic that is museums, to be more specific, natural history museums. The word museum comes from a Latin word museum, and usually it is defined as a building which is known to house historical artifacts, arts, and a deal with sculptures, objects of culture, or biological interests. A natural history museum, or museum of natural history, is a scientific institution with natural history collections that include current and historical records of animals, plants, fungi, ecosystems, geology, paleontology, climatology, and more. The primary role of a natural history museum is to provide the scientific community with current and historical specimens for their research, which is to improve our understanding of the natural world. Some museums have public exhibits to share the beauty and wonder of the natural world with the public. These are usually referred to as public museums. Some museums feature non-natural history collections in addition to their primary collections, such as ones related to history, art, and science. Renaissance cabinets of curiosities were private collections that typically included exotic specimens of natural history, sometimes faked, along with other types of objects. The first natural history museum was possibly of that of a Swiss scholar Konrad Gessner, established in Zurich in the mid-16th century. The Museum National de Historial Naturel, established in Paris in 1635, was the first natural history museum to take the form that would be recognized as a natural history museum today. Early natural history museums offered limited accessibility as they were generally private collections or holdings of scientific societies. The Ashmolean Museum opened in 1683 was the first natural history museum to grant admission to the general public. I would like to speak on the different types of museums. Museums can vary based on size from large institutions covering many of the categories below to very small institutions focusing on specific subjects such as a specific location, a notable person, or a given period of time. Museums can also be categorized into major groups by the type of collections they display to include fine arts, applied arts, craft, archaeology, anthropology, and ethnology, biography, history, cultural history, science, technology, children's museums, natural history, botanical, and zoological gardens. Within these categories, many museums specialize further. Example, museums of modern art, folk art, local history, military history, aviation history, philately, agriculture, or geology. Another type of museum is an encyclopedic museum, commonly referred to as a universal museum. These are museums that have collections representative of the world and typically include art, science history, and cultural history. Now to discuss or talk about some of the museums, we begin with the first one, agricultural museums. Agricultural museums are dedicated to preserving agricultural history and heritage. They aim to educate the public on the subject of agricultural history, their legacy and impact on society. And to accomplish this, they specialize in the display and interpretation of artifacts related to agriculture, often of a specific time period or in a specific region. The next type of museums are architecture museums. Architectural museums are institutions dedicated to educating visitors about architecture and a variety of related fields, often including urban design, landscape design, interior decoration, engineering, and historic preservation. Additionally, museums of art or history sometimes dedicate a portion of the museum or a permanent exhibit to a particular facet or era of architecture and design, though this does not technically constitute a proper museum of architecture. The third type are archaeology museums. An archaeology museum specializes in the display of archaeological artifacts. Many are in the open air, such as the Agora of Athens and the Roman Forum. Other display artifacts found in archaeological sites in, uh, are found inside buildings. Some, such as the Western Australian Museum, exhibit maritime archaeological materials. They appear in its shipwreck galleries, a wing of the Maritime Museum. And this museum has also developed a museum without walls through a series of underwater wreck trails. 
Art museums are also referred to as art galleries, which is a space for the exhibition of art, usually in the form of art objects from the visual arts, primarily paintings, illustrations and sculptures. The first publicly owned museum in Europe was the Amberbach Cabinet in Basel, originally a private collection, sold to the city in 1661 and made public since 1671. The Ashmolean Museum in Oxford, which was opened in 24th May 1683, is considered as the world's first university art museum. The specialized art museum is considered a fairly modern inv invention, the first being the Hermitage in St. Petersburg, which was established in 1764. Biographical museums are dedicated to items relating to the life of a single person or a group of people, and may also display the items collected by their subjects during their lifetimes. Some biographical museums are located in a house or other site associated with the lives of their subjects. Automobile museums comprise of around 107 uh, in the United States, with one in Canada and one in the Republic of Georgia. Automobile museums are for car, fi car fans, collectors, enthusiasts, and for families. Children's museums are institutions that provide exhibits and programs to stimulate informal learning experiences for children. In contrast to the traditional museums that typically have a hands-off policy regarding exhibits, children's museums feature interactive exhibits that are designed to be manipulated by children. Community museums are referred to as museums serving as an exhibition and gathering space for specific identity groups or geographic areas. In contrast to traditional museums, again, community museums are commonly multidisciplinary and may simultaneously exhibit the history, social history, art, or folklore of their communities. Design Museum is a museum with a focus on product, industrial, graphic, fashion, and architectural designs. Encyclopedic museums are largely, mostly national institutions that offer visitors a plethora of information on a variety of subjects that can tell both local and global stories. The aim of encyclopedic museums is to provide examples of each classification available for a field of knowledge. Ethnology museums are a type of museum that focus on studying, collecting, preserving, and displaying artifacts and objects concerning ethnology and anthropology. This type of museum usually were built in countries possessing diverse ethnic groups or significant numbers of ethnic minorities. The Ozurgeti History Museum in Georgia is an example of one such museum. Historic house museums lie within the category of history museums. They are the most numerous and earliest proje uh, projects for preserving historic homes began way back in the 1850s under the direction of individuals concerned with the public good and the preservation, mostly of American history, especially centered on the first president. These museums are also unique in that the actual structure belongs to the museum collection as a historical object. Historical history museums cover the knowledge of history and its relevance to the present and future. Some cover specialized curatorial aspects of history or a particular locality. Others are much more general. Such museums contain a wide range of objects including documents, artifacts of all kinds of art, archaeological objects, etc. Antiquities museums specialize in more archaeological findings. A common type of history museum is the history house. Living history museums combine historic architecture, material culture, and custom interpretation with natural and cultural landscapes to create an impressive learning environment. These museums include the collection, preservation, or interpretation of material culture, traditional skills, and historical processes. An entirely different museum is the Maritime Museum that specializes in the presentation of maritime history, culture, or archaeology. They explore the relationship between societies and certain bodies of water. As mentioned, maritime museums are primarily archaeological, and these focus on the interpretation and preservation of shipwrecks and other artifacts recovered from a maritime setting. A second type of a maritime history museum is dedicated to educating the public about humanity's maritime past. Medical museums, considered as a rare species today, are largely an extinct subtype of a museum. The most notable exception of such kind of a museum is the Muta Museum in Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and the Hunterian Museum at the Royal College of Surgeons in Glasgow, Scotland. Medical museums functioned as an integral part of medical students' education through the 19th century and into the earlier 20th century. Dry and wet anatomical specimens, casts, drawings, oil paintings, and photographs 
provided a means for medical students to compare healthy anatomical specimens with abnormal or diseased organs. Museums like the Motor Museum added medical instruments and equipment to their collections to preserve and teach the history of the medical profession. By the 1920s, medical museums had reached their nadir and began to wane in their importance as institutes of medical knowledge and training. Medical teaching shifted towards training medical students in hospitals and laboratories, and over the course of the 20th century, most medical museums disappeared from the museum horizon. The next type of museums are memorial museums. These are museums dedicated both to educating the public about and commemorating a specific historic event, usually involving mass suffering. The concept gained traction throughout the 20th century as a response to the numerous and well-publicized mass atrocities committed during that century. Military and war museums specialize in military histories and they are often recognized from a national point of view where a museum in a particular country will have displays organized around conflicts in which that country has taken part. They typically include displays of weapons and other military equipment, uniforms, wartime propaganda, and exhibits of civilian life during wartime and decorations, among others. Mobile museums, as the term implied to museums, that make exhibitions from a vehicle, such as a van. Some institutions, such as St. Vital Historical Society and the Walker Arts Center, use the term to refer to a portion of their collection that travels to sites away from the museum for educational purposes. Other mobile museums have no home site and use travel as their exclusive means of presentation. Natural History Museums Museums of natural history and natural science typically exhibit work of the natural world and they focus on nature and culture. Exhibitions educate the public on natural history, dinosaurs, zoology, oceanography, anthropology and more. Evolution, environmental issues, and biodiversity are major areas in natural science museums. And notable museums coming under this category include the Natural History Museum in London, the Oxford University Museum of Natural History in Oxford, the Smithsonian Institute, National Museum of Natural History in Washington, D.C., etc. Our country, too, has eight to nine natural history museums located around our country, the latest being commissioned in uh, Gangtok. The next category of museums are open air museums. Open air museums coll collect and re erect old buildings at outdoor sites, usually in settings of recreated landscapes of the past. The first one was King Oscar's II's collection near Oslo in Norway, which was opened in 1881. Pop up museums. A concept developed in the 1990s, the pop-up museum is generally defined as a short-term institution existing in a temporary space. These temporary museums are finding increasing favor among more progressive museum professionals as a means of direct community involvement with objects and exhibition. Science museums and technology centers, or technology museums as they are commonly called, revolve around scientific achievements and marvels and their history. To explain complicated inventions, a combination of demonstrations, interactive programs, and thought-provoking media are used. Some museums may have exhibits on topics such as computers, aviation, railway museums, physics, astronomy, and animal kingdom. The Museum of Science and Industry in Chicago is considered to be a most popular museum. Science museums traditionally emphasize cultural heritage through objects of intrinsic value, echoes of the curiosity cabinets of the Renaissance period. The 19th century brought a proliferation of science museums with roots in technical and industrial heritage museums. By the 1960s, interactive science centers with their specialized hands-on galleries became prevalent. The Exp Exploratorium in San Francisco and the Ontario Science Center in 1969 were two of the earliest examples of science centers dedicated to exploring scientific principles through hands-on exhibits. Science museums in particular may consist of planetaria or large theatres, usually built around a dome. Museums may have IMAX feature films, which may provide 3D viewing or higher quality picture. As a result, IMAX content provides a more immersive experience for people of all ages. Also, new virtual museums, now known as net museums, have recently been created. These are usually websites belonging to real museums and containing photo galleries of items found in those real museums. 
this new presentation is considered to be very useful for people living far away and who wish to see the contents of these museums. Specialized museums, a number of different museums exhibit or exist to demonstrate a variety of topics. Music museums may celebrate the life and work of composers or musicians, such as the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame and Museum in Cleveland, Ohio, or the Handel House Museum in London, England. In Glendale, Arizona, the Bead Museum fosters an appreciation and understanding of the global, historical, cultural, and artistic significance of beads and related artifacts dating as far back as 1500 years. Virtual museums, as mentioned earlier, is a new development with the expansion of the web and is an establishment of virtual museums and online exhibitions. Online initiatives like the Virtual Museum of Canada and the National Museum of the United States Air Force provide physical museums with a web presence. Online curatorial platforms such as Rhizome or the Archival of Digital Art developed online exhibitions that transform the museal experience within the digital space. And last but not the least, zoological parks and botanical gardens. Although zoos and botanical gardens are most often thought of as museums, they are in fact living museums. They exist for the same purpose as other museums do, to educate, inspire, action, and to study, develop, and manage collections. They are also managed much like other museums and face the same challenges. Notable zoos include the San Diego Zoo, the London Zoo, the Brookfield Zoo, the Berlin Zoo, the New York Botanical Garden, for example, and our own zoo, most famous or most famed zoo, the Mysore Zoo. Museums, or natural history museums for that matter, are considered to be our treasure troves of history, of culture, of life. I hope that this deliberation has provided an insight into the various museums that do exist in and around the world. And I also hope that we all make it a point to make our visiting museums a part of our life, so much so that we can inculcate as well as carry over our traditional history and pass it over to the next generation. Thank you.